Hello and welcome to the Portia Ministries Lunchtime Family and Friends Prayer Call. Today is Wednesday, uh, September the 28th, 2016. Our word of exhortation, um, we've been here before, we're going to be here again. It's a good meditation scripture for on and on and on. It's in Psalm 18. Psalm 18 in one of my Bibles was titled the Warrior Psalm. Every one of us, the whosoever is each and every one of us, we're in a battle. And so to deal with this battle, the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal, you can see a lot of them right here in Psalm 18. Um, in this Bible, it's titled, Calling Upon God in Distress. So you're going through something that's not right. You know, my grandbaby was attacked on this weekend while I was in purpose, you know, in Los Angeles, California at the prayer quake. Then I get a call that my granddaughter is being taken to the hospital. And then I get a call that my grandmother is, is not doing well. So the enemy is attacking generations. You're going to attack my daughter's daughter and my mother's mother. What? Who does that? So you need to learn how to call on the word of God because the enemy don't play fair. Uh, but it's not about fair. God is not a, a just God. He's, he's a fair God. They say that what people say, that's not, it's not fair that I'm going through all of this. Never said that he was fair, but he is just. He, he will vindicate you. He will move on your behalf. And the weapons of your warfare in this situation you're going through, they're not carnal. They're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, these mindsets, even against these attacks that come. And the attacks are coming and they're looking for an entrance of these mindsets to be able to clown in your life. And so the way to shut them down is to get the word of God. So, Psalm 18, this is calling upon God in distress. Um, this psalm is 50 verses long. We're not going to read the whole thing, but I admonish you on your own to read it. Read it in different versions. You know, I love the Amplified. I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified. Check it out in the message, in the New Living Translation, different versions, so that you can see what God is doing. He's concerned about us. He don't just drop us down in a war zone or we're in a war zone and he's not telling us how to be equipped in this war zone. Are you believing God for wholeness in yourself, your family, your friends, your loved ones? This is a family, friends, and loved ones prayer call. I welcome all of the Scipio Turner portion of my family to this line. I thank God that he has prepared me as an intercessor for such a time as this to come and first and foremost deal with my family. Um, and, and, and our time out, I used to cry and whine and say, God, why can the gift be used in the at church, but my family is not benefited from it? I ain't whining no more. Wake up. This is for you. It's for you first. And then I am sent to the nations, but I can't go to the nations if my family is raggedy. So I'm going to make sure that my family, friends, and loved ones, I'm not going to do like it says in the book of Isaiah, far be it from me to sin against God and not pray for you. I will pray for you. No matter what I see, I'm not moved by what I see because the issues that are coming up against you that you are entangled in they don't define who you are the anointing defines who you are the saying that i said for years the issues that you overcome are an indication of the anointing you are designed to walk in not just me each and every one of us are anointed for such a time as this and i'm gonna give you some wealth and some warfare tools that when you're going through this is how you get body body. This is how you get with them like we used to say in the streets. This is how you ride or die. In the club, I was the one. If something going to pop off as little as I am, I'm going to do what? Would take my shoe off and get them what? Okay, so in the spirit realm. Oh, you want to come at my sister? Oh, you want to come at my child? You want to come at my husband? What? Here we go. I got you. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal. Anything that's hidden in the darkness has the power to torment. And so I'm going to turn on the light of the word. And then we're going to copy, David, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So when the enemy come attacking through a loved one, you know, a thorn in the flesh, that's people that are close to you, that get up under your skin, that get on your last nerve. Uh-huh, that's a thorn in the flesh. That's what that is. And so far be it from me to turn around and start cussing them back out or getting back with them instead of dealing with the root of the issue because the weapon of us of our warfare are not carnal. Here in Psalm 18, he says, thanks be unto God who teaches my hands to war. I'm not going to pop you in the face like I wanted to back in the day. I'm going to deal with it in the spirit realm. I'm going to do my battles on the battleground of the spirit realm, the unseen realm. Because those issues that you are battling with, they're an indication of the anointing that you're designed to walk in. Are you going to say, lay back and say, it just is how I am. They just going to have to accept me like this. Or are you going to get in the word and wash in the water of the word and get healed, set free, delivered, cleansed. So you can turn around and help others be healed, set free, delivered, and cleansed. What am I talking about? Psalm 51. It's talking about when you notice sin in your life, there is a repentance process and a restoration process and a clean cleansing process. At verse 13. 
13, it turns and says, then shall you teach transgressors your ways. Don't come out trying to, you trying to, I, I'm going through the process. I need you to go through with me. Some stuff we can do that with, but some stuff is so deep seated that you got to get with you and God and the word of God and maybe a one or two people mature in the Lord that you trust like James 5 talks about and James 3, the wisdom we talked about a couple of weeks ago. You got to get with that and you got to handle this thing and go through and understand that there are some things that you may have been believing your entire life that are entire lies. Don't feel good when the lies come out, but understand this, the truth going to get you some freedom. In Psalm 18, none of that was in my exhortation. All I heard was Psalm 18. I didn't know where to go, so I'm free-flowing on today. But I'm telling you, read Psalm 18 on your own. I'm just going to read verse 1 through 3 and jump down around a little bit. Hang with me. It says, I love you fervently and devotedly, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. What is he delivering you from? Okay, let's keep reading. My God and my keen and firm strength in whom I will trust and take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. And then he goes verse 3 through round some down in there talking about how the enemy was clowning and coming up against him and manifesting, you know, weapons that formed but didn't prosper. Yeah, that's what he's talking about, those form weapons right up in there. And then he starts talking about the greatness and the grandeur of God. Then you get down to verse 16 and it says, he reached from one high and took me. He drew me out of many waters. Do you feel like you're drowning? I can't breathe. God will reach down and take you and draw you out of many waters. But you got to have that desire. I can't want it better than you want it. Let's keep reading. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Brandon Rollins. Today's your birthday. Verse 17. He delivered me from, strong, from my strong enemy and from those who hated and abhorred me, for they were too strong for me. Oh, you think you can handle this on your own? No. Even David said they was too strong for me. What the David, the same David that was said Saul killed thousands and David killed ten thousands, said my enemies were too strong for me. But even as I just read in Nehemiah, the battle ain't yours no way. No matter how strong he is, you, that's why you have to know God is your rock, your fortress, your deliverer, your strength. Because the strength of the enemy in, in, in Nehemiah, the enemy's name was uh, Sanballat and Tobiah. The name Sanballat means strength. Yeah, your enemy got some strength, but your God is stronger than him. Come on now. So he, 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 he shut my enemies down right there. Verse 18. The, in, the enemies, they confronted and came upon me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay and support. Don't, get, don't be tripping if I don't answer my phone. And the pastor didn't do what he said he was going to do. And I, no, the Lord was my stay and my support. Let that become our, our, our declaration. He brought me forth into a large place. He was delivering me because he was pleased with me and delighted in me. He's pleased with you and delighted in you when he sees his son, Jesus Christ. Are you a Christian? Are you being made more like Christ? Are you Christ-like? You may not be perfect, but he needs to see the blood and not you trying to, your own righteousness that's as filthy rags. He needs to see the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 20 says, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. See, my righteousness is only in Jesus Christ, not my own. Um... Uh, the Amplified says, my conscious integrity and sincerity with him, according to the cleanness of my hands, has he recompensed me. Uh, flipping over to verse 24, he says, therefore has the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness. You know, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. So we got to work on, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because the recompense comes to you. Okay. Okay, dropping down to where he starts talking about, he, where he teaches my hands to war. At verse 33, it says, He makes my feet like hinds feet, able to stand firmly or make progress on the dangerous heights of testing and trouble. So you're going through tests, you're going through trouble, but he done gave you feet. He's making it where you can walk the walk of faith. You can run this race that's set before you. Your feet are like hind feet. They hopping over whatever obstacle, whatever want to manifest the weapons that manifest that will not prosper. He's strengthening you over those. I'm going to reread that again. That he makes my feet like hind's feet, 
able to stand firmly and make progress on the dangerous heights of testing and trouble. He sets me securely upon my high places. He teaches my hands to war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. That is supernatural strength that comes when you press into your super God. You do the natural part. You get in position. The super shows up and pow, it's, it's going on. Miraculous happens. Miracle signs and wonders follow them that believe. Who do you believe? Okay, let me just, one last thing that I wanted us to see down at verse 50. Well, verse 49, therefore will I give thanks and extol you, O Lord, among the nations and sing praises to your name. Great deliverances, plural, and triumphs, plural, gives he to his king and he shows mercy and steadfast love to his anointed, to David and his offspring forever. Are you the offspring of David? You have deliverances and triumphs in your future. If you set your sights on what God is telling you to set your sights on, that he is the Lord God, sovereign ruler, that he is high and lifted up, that he is in control of any and everything that comes your way, the weapons form, we're told in the word of God, they're going to form. He said, you haven't given up anything for my sake that will not be restored to you in this life with persecutions. Stop tripping about the persecutions that come. That's why God told us in James, a couple of weeks ago. Count it all joy when you're going through. Stop tripping when you're going through. I got you. Press into my presence. Don't allow wavering and double-mindedness to come because of the weapons that are forming. Don't lose your focus and look at the weapons instead of looking to me. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. So the weapons come. You know, your granddaughter's in the hospital, your grandmother's sick, or whatever your issue is, your, th those are formed weapons that come to break your focus from where the peace is. And see, when you have peace, you have power. And that's my word of exhortation. It was long. I know it was, but you need to understand that you have power just like I do. Yeah, I, I'm a little mad at the forces of darkness that's been trying to hold us in, in bondage. No. God, we come to you this afternoon giving you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Thank you, God, for everything that you're doing in our life. Thank you for the Romans 8.28 of our lives where we know that all things work together. The good, the bad, the ugly, the nasty, the bitter, the sweet, they all work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to your purpose. Thank you for empowering us with your Holy Spirit that gives us the power, the equipment, the knowledge, the understanding to apply the blood of Jesus to our lives so that we can walk as the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when he looks to us, when we cry out to him, he sees his son Jesus and he delivers. He sends triumph our way. We thank you, God, that you love us so much that you've given us this plan of redemption. You've given us men after your own heart. You've given us the fivefold ministry gift for the perfecting of the whosoever's, the saints which many of the whosoever's are called to walk in the fivefold, but we got issues and we're not taking the time to deal with them, but we're dealing with them in this time and in this season. God, have your way in our life. Search our hearts, O oh Lord, and see if there be any way in us that's not like you. That way is pride. That way is high to being too lifted up or being too concerned about me. God, strip any pride out of our hearts. Pride that would allow the flesh to reign. The manifestations of the works of the flesh instead of the fruit of the spirit. Because pride in our hearts brings a, a, a humbling process. You would rather us humble ourselves. You said in James, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Help us know how to walk as humble people in this time and in this season. God, we lift up all of the prayer requests that we've received. We're praying for Charles Andrew and family, God. We're standing on 2 Corinthians chapter 1. God, where you, oh God, say that you will be the comfort to the, those that need to be comforted, God. As they're going through this time of bereavement and transitions that are going on, thank you for comforting them in the midst of it all. God, allow us to understand that we don't grieve like the world grieves anyway. We will see them in the future glory. But while I'm yet alive in the land of the living,
I'm going to press and get to know how to use the weapons of my warfare that are not carnal. I'm going to snatch as many people out of the kingdom of darkness as I can. But God, we thank you for your word that says, weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. There is a time for mourning. And because she's just passed, God, we the intercessors stand around this family and we gird them up and we guard on their behalf whereby they can mourn. And when the time of mourning is done, they can run on and see what the end going to be while they are alive in the land of the living. Living, that we celebrate the life of mama, but we don't just let it be a memory. We let it continue to live through us, the godly things that she has overcome and conquered and left for this family. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We pray for traveling grace and mercy with the transition in my family on this weekend, God. We give you all the glory, praise, and honor that you know what's best for us. We simply get in line with your agreement and we say, have your way in our lives. We pray for each and every person that is seeking employment, that is seeking transportation. God, in this time and in this season, that as we do the natural part, we put out the resumes, we do the online profiles, we do what you're telling us to do and where you're sending us, that you will cause favor to reign on us, oh God, to reign in our lives. We thank you for every praise report thus far, but we thank you for all that you have in store. We barely scratched the surface for what you have in store for us, your people. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Have your way, oh God. We pray for healing in the lives of those that need healing in this time and in this season. I especially pray for mental health, oh God, that your people will be strong in thought and our minds would be stayed on you, that the enemy would not come in and play these games with our mind. We decree and declare strong sound minds in this time and in this season that you get the glory and the honor and the praise we thank you for your healing virtue being released according to Psalm 107 20 you sent your word and healed the sick and by the stripes of Jesus Christ those that are in need of healing will receive their healing thank you for supplying all of our needs according to your riches and glory and get then giving us understanding and knowledge how to access those riches that are in glory to manifest in the earth realm we thank you God that it is you that give us the power to get wealth and the first portion is that we are tithers and we give of our sustenance freely. You give seed to the sower and we'll keep it flowing. It can flow through us. We give you all the glory, all the honor. I pray for each and every person that takes the time to listen to this playback or watch these videos weekly. God, I ask you to give them the desires of their heart. That means place within their heart that, that there are to desire that you desire according to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11, God, that your desires be made and manifested in our lives. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And as I close, this prayer, I'm going to read Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 in the Amplified. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also planted eternity in men's hearts and minds. A divinely implanted sense of a purpose working through the ages which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy yet so that man cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end we thank you for Jesus Christ our Savior that gives us access to this place in our hearts the kingdom of God is shed abroad in our hearts and you will be glorified from each and every one of your kingdom servants for such a time as this in Jesus name amen